Alpha Omega London, makers of shoes, creator of waves in the fashion industry, introduces the Fashion Vanguards podcast. Our aim is simple, to open minds, listen to opinions, share knowledge and start conversations. Our podcast series unravels fashion's many guises and tackles head on the current issues that matter, getting honest views from the mouths that matter. We at Fashion Vanguards believe it is time to stop talking and make change. The labeling of mental disorders or mental illnesses carries social stigma and negative connotations which prevent us from tackling the issue. In this series, we address the growing concerns of more and more people who are suffering or have recovered from mental ill health within the fashion industry and the creative sector as a whole. Let's welcome our panelists. Hi, I'm Nazina, bastion of creativity, instigator of change within the fashion sector. Hi, my name is Clara. I uh, run an experimental music theatre company in London and I'm interested in finding different processes for collaborative creating. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm currently a student at Condé Nast College and I major in fashion communications. Hi there, I'm Diana. I'm a second year student in London College of Fashion, studying fashion design and development, and I'm very interested in changing the mindset towards the fashion industry. I'm Ashwini Deshpande, designer, dancer, dreamer, and host of the Fashion Vanguard podcasts. I go to London College of Fashion and hope to change the world one dress at a time. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of the Fashion Vanguard's podcast series on mental health, where we explore the issue of mental health in fashion and other creative sectors. Whether it be Alexander McQueen, Kate Spade, Robin Williams, or Van Gogh, several of the top creatives in the world have dealt with mental health problems. A report by Inspire and Ulster University, based on a survey conducted in Ireland in 2017, stated the following facts. 36% of creatives were diagnosed with anxiety. A whopping 60% had had suicidal thoughts. 16% had at least once tried to take their own life. These numbers are much higher than amongst regular individuals who may or may not work in the creative industry. Does this translate to mental health being a bigger issue in the creative sector than in others? It's quite startling, actually, the figures, aren't they? Yeah, Mm -hmm. um, definitely cause for concern. I think it's actually important, maybe if we look at the importance of the creative industries, because I think what we're not given is information as to how much the creative industries collectively contribute to the world's economy, even the UK's economy. Um, I remember I was, I was just looking through um, a few stats and it was quite surprising to me that this is just not, you know, sort of readily available. When you're looking at particularly the UK, one in eight UK enterprises are creative enterprises, collectively responsible for generating over a hundred billion to our economy. So that's greater than, you know, the contributions of the automotive industries, aerospace, life sciences and oil and gas combined. Wow. Combined. Wow, that is massive. So this so you know, if we're talking about mental health and this issue within an industry that has a huge I guess, a huge contribution towards our economy. It's definitely notable. I think, um, you know, anything which which has um, the ability to also um, prohibit or impede growth to some or greater or lesser extent needs to be sort of, um, it, it needs to be tackled. It needs to be sort of identified or at least actions need to be taken. I guess like... Um I think there is this there's a there's this assumption that um people who go into the creative industries are people who for some mad nature or nurture related reason have a different view of reality and therefore go into the arts, so it's kind of their fault if they then um suffer from the pressure of the creative arts. I think that's a very archaic view of a creative person, um mm. that we're still suffering from. Um and uh I guess like more so than and some kind of nature related, some kind of disp- creative disposition. It's, I think it's quite clear that it's, especially these days, it's, um, it's mainly the precarity of the industry that leads to a lot of suffering. Absolutely. Um, and then connected to that, there are these incredibly ossified 
institutional structures that I mean I guess like it's it's obviously different depending on what industry you look at whether it's acting or creating or writing or making music or something um, I guess these you can't you can't generalize massively about all those institutions but from my experience most institutions if you actually look at the top they're still held by old white men and um, and then you've got these like kind of structures going down mm. and poisoning pretty much everything still and I think that's very difficult to break through especially because state funding is being cut increasingly um, so these are almost challenges I guess I, to yeah. you know sort of um, establishing yourself if you are you know um, somebody within the, within the creative sector um, which I guess you're probably saying is is to some degree a causation of a lot of possibly the internal struggle struggles sorry that that one might experience yeah I think so I think um it's if you look at those uh those artistic geniuses um of the 19th century I mean like most of them were quite like financially quite comfortable like a lot of them le left lived in nice houses and mm. obviously I mean like Thoreau who talked about the, out, being out in nature and enjoying mm. nature and being being part of that could do that because his mom and sister were like down the road and could bring him food and clean clothes four times a day. So you know, like it's it's like you need a certain sense of security and calm and like you don't need a lot of time to genuinely create. And I think if that security is taken away from large swathes of the population, whether it's due to I don't know race, gender, or class, that's yeah. that's that's. An, incredibly harmful if only just because it limits the aesthetic potential of this absolutely. industry absolutely so that's more or less touching upon the socio-economics i guess the, the challenges that are faced by those within that particular area let, let me just bring it back to a lot of the enterprises and and the creative enterprises or businesses within the creative sector and what their challenges were a lot of them um you know, sort of, uh, I guess, noted that there, there were challenges to accessing um, a lot of support, a lot of finance. Um, you know, there was there was no protection over their IP. Um, you know, they were mostly self-employed um, and not equipped with the tools to maximise, I guess, the value of their IP. So, um, you know, and these are a lot of businesses. We're not talking about a small industry. This is a very large industry um, and one that we are potentially sort of all involved in. Um, the creative sector actually employs more than two million people. Um, and that was sort of the, the, the numbers have, have actually increased, in fact, doubled um, since 2011. So this is quite... Um, is it, this is quite a big issue and affecting a lot of people. Now, when we're looking at mental health within the creative sector, I still do feel, though, that it's too easy to draw a very clear link between the two. I think there needs mm -hmm. to be further analysis. And, and Clara, you did sort of touch upon it, which is that there are the, you know, sort of factors, socioeconomic, et cetera, um, that, that, that do have a huge impact um, on an individual. Um, but sort of drawing from that, um, is there anything else that we could, when we're looking at the creative industries, mm -hmm. is there anything else that we could possibly look at to sort of answer the question, the, the original question? Um, well, I read somewhere that for athletes, for instance, when they're working, um, they're continuously straining their bodies. Mm. But then when they're not working, when they're taking some time off or um, resting their bodies, um, their bodies are completely rested. Mm. However, in the creative industry, for instance, or any industry that requires you to focus your mind and use your brain creatively, um, the creative mind can never really take a break as such. You can never completely switch off, which is why there's more strain on us mentally. So I guess that's also another thing that can be linked to why the creative sector has um, a lot more mental health issues. Yeah, I think that puts mental health at risk as well, because you are constantly working to be original and innovative in mm -hmm. a world that almost everything has been already created. <laughs> the so postmodern era. Uh, yeah, so lots of pressure on you as a creative. I think also um, what you touched on now, I think that physical health is something that's explicit and we can see when someone's like sick or injured or whatever the case is. And with mental health, obviously you can't see it. Yeah. And it's really hard to just diagnose someone 
right off the bat because obviously like just because you're depressed doesn't mean that you know you're not a happy person or just because you're whatever and so I think that also when you're creative like not only not putting your creative mind to rest but then also like having to constantly justify yourself because other people can't see it sometimes is hard. Like you don't have to justify when you're sick. Usually other people can tell or when you're tired or injured. But I think like when your mind is kind of clouded is like, that's when it's like also really difficult. Yeah. 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 And given the stigmas around mental health as well, even people who speak up about it aren't necessarily taken seriously. Absolutely. As compared to physical health, like you said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame actually, because the creative process is one actually that it is sort of linked to you know positivity it's linked to happiness essentially yeah people i guess it's quite ironic that there is um a lot of an increasing amount of people are spending money on things like painting or music therapy while the amount of people suffering from mental health issues in in the arts is going up so it's it's like this um (laughs) kind of strange these like two strange poles yeah. of people who work sort of and it's just suffering. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do kind of, I, I think like um, to to talk, like just to touch on what what you said about um, this this pressure to be innovative. Um, I guess the um, this other piece of heritage that we've been carrying with us through the ages, the ideas of of the idea of like a, an artist as like a sole creator, um, also has something to do with that and an encourage encourages competition quite a nasty kind of competition mm. and mm-hmm. it prevents support networks from happening even though I guess I guess everyone who, who works in the creative industry knows that there is no such thing as like a single creator we're all completely we, we, we're all part of net big networks of, of material support kind of intellectual support and all, the, all of these things and I think there is also a paradigm shift that needs to be brought about for people to be aware of that they're in the best sense supported, but they also carry responsibilities for those around them. And I think that would make bring about that would make a huge difference, especially in that in the area of mental health. Mm. I totally agree. And also, I've noticed that um, is this link between being creative, being an artist, and being successful. If you're not successful, then you fail. Right. So then there's this mm. pressure on you on and then you have to link depression with successful and then it goes it goes on and on for example van gogh you mentioned ashwini van gogh he uh, only sold two paintings when he was alive so in his lifetime he sold only two paintings one of them was sold to his brother so that's my point and then he became van gogh right vincent van gogh so all of his life being depressed and and sad and lonely and then creating such a big art that's surrounded us all day. So I guess like there is also, um, I'm not sure if you've seen the comedy show Nanette, um, which is an amazing uh, comedy show. It's on Netflix at the moment, sorry. I <laughs> shouldn't be plugging this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, there is, a, uh, she mentions, she tells uh, she tells the story of Van Gogh and because uh, she talks a lot about mental health as well. And um, she said that there is this assumption that that Van Gogh never tried to do anything against his, his problems, but he actually took medication. Apparently, one of yes, because they they there's this assumption that it's it's his depression that made him paint so beautifully. And she said like the, the one of the the pills that he took, one of the side effects is that you th- see things with a yellow hue. So the question is like, did he actually that were the the sunflowers, for example, created because he took those medications, right. not because he was depressed in the first place? And I guess like yeah, it's this romanticized image of the suffering artist yep. that we're suffering from and if if I may just add to that I think their gender also comes in because there are plenty of stories of suffering male artists I'm not sure how many stories there are in fact I don't know any of suffering female artists maybe we could link their Frida Frida Kahlo as well true Mm -hmm. yeah maybe we could link that but yeah far fewer definitely yeah but I think that uh, with Frida it's also like her being it does have to do with gender because I think it is her like I think in modern day now, it's much more about Frida as a person rather than like her art. And I think that she's romanticized like as a figure. Mm. And I think people mm, that's very make true. her like, like my cousin is really, like really, really, really like knows a lot about her. And like, she wasn't particularly, um, I don't know, I guess you could say like pretty, like she was suffering from like mm. a lot of like physical like disabilities and like mm. a lot of, things like she wasn't considered and then I feel like a lot of that is taken upon her own image and made to fit like the standards So here we now. go again if you think of a male artist you think of 
their uh, work. Let's think of Picasso, you will think of his cubism, right? Yeah. And his paintings. But then if you think of Frida, you will think of her yeah. face, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there's yeah. another point that, oh, we are going to idolize the women in yeah. art or yeah. creative sector. I mean, sector. to be fair, she did do a lot of self-portraits. Though. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. But I think like, the other thing with Frida Kahlo, I mean, she had a she had an accident. So yeah. like, it's almost like she's like a suffering, like she's a victim of fate. But I mean, like uh, people like Leonora Carrington, who's like a, an amazing surrealist female painter. I mean, she suffered from mental health. I mean, she was also put into a mental health asylum by her dad, which apparently was terrible. Anyways, but I guess like mm. these stories, like so many of these stories aren't known as much as the story of Picasso. Just a quick reminder, you're listening to the Fashion Vanguards podcast hosted by Alpha Mega London. Please subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on and give us a review. And if you would like to get in touch, please drop us a message at info at alphamegalondon.com. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. So can we safely say that there is pretty compelling evidence to suggest that there is a substantial amount or level of mental ill health within the creative sectors? I mean, do we know which are the bodies that analyze key data and findings and how robust or reliable they are? Are these facts and figures, are they reliable? Yeah, because I was going to say, um, because of the stigma with mental health, I think a lot of people don't even come forth about um the fact that they do have a, a, a you know an illness so how how do how do we know that these figures are like more you know what i mean how do we know that mm-hmm. there aren't more people and maybe the people in the creative industries are more comfortable maybe with their emotions so they're more willing to say that mm-hmm. they yeah suffer from yeah. depression anxiety, it could whatever. go either way yeah whereas mm-hmm. in a maybe more like logistics logical you know mathematics driven environment people aren't as willing to talk about it and it's a lot more i think hidden also because you as a creative you create based on your emotions Emotions. right Mm -hmm. you create maybe because you suffer or you create because you're happy so that means i acknowledge my emotions better than someone who's maybe doing every day I don't know, engineering, for example. Yeah, I think you're a lot more self-aware when you're creating because you have to kind of be in touch with something, right? Like and you have with to yourself. take it. Yeah, right, exactly. Because you have to you have to create like it has to come from somewhere. You can't just like like it's not an equation, you know? So yeah, I don't know if necessarily the facts and figures are maybe as reliable or because there might be more people that are that way, but then on the flip side of that, don't we, like how 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 do we know that maybe in another industry there are more people that are suffering with mental health and maybe they just haven't come forward it's it. true it's such a difficult area it's, yeah. it's it's a difficult um issue to to almost understand and record can yeah. i just ask do we know um because i didn't look this up i realized i should have looked this up but do we know who funded those studies because no um, the which univer- studies the, are you the, talking about? The, 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 the Ulster University yeah. funded um, the Inspire yeah. survey okay. or Also, there is uh, the Mental Health Foundation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. MIND. Um, there's yeah. NHS puts out quite a lot of figures yeah. about this stuff as well. So, yeah. so I presume that there mm-hmm. is an, an element of public funding, mm-hmm. um, but there's just not enough studies. And the funny thing is, is that when you look at a lot of studies that have been sort of undertaken I guess um, I guess since sort of like late 90s a lot of them have been case studies that have been trying to sort of prove this link between um, creativity and mental ill health Um, and at least 15 of those case studies out of sort of 20 odd um, not establishing a link maybe you know, and then, and then the rest did. And I think maybe a couple were inconclusive. But the point is, is that I think it's too easy for for us to rely on this notion that mental health and creativity are, are both interlinked. And um, just having a few facts and figures sometimes is, is just not allowing for us to really delve deep into the issue. First of all, you've got this question of causation. It does one cause the other? Well, there's not enough evidence to support that. And if that's the case, where are we in terms of understanding, really fully understanding this issue? Where are we um, really sort of 
you know, out of a, a group of, you know, say 10 people, really understanding how many of those 10 people are really suffering. Mm. You know, that, that's, that we're not, we're sort of really not anywhere closer than we were, you know, 10, 15 years ago, which is for me, um, it, it's, it's, it's quite disturbing given that, you know, we're told, I guess, issues are arising, issues of mental Ill health are arising within this particular industry. Um, yeah, very much. There's definitely, there's so many stats and figures out there. Like if there are any stats and figures, it's all about how it's rising, honestly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's, you know what I find, here's, here's my thing. And we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the creative. Um, but... I almost feel it's a form of labeling when we're looking within the creative industry because, you know, as we were discussing earlier, the creative industry has a huge sort of contribution towards the economy, but yet still there's no real validation of the contributions that are made. You you hear a lot about finance, you hear a lot about the medical professions. Absolutely. But you don't hear a lot about the creative industry. And I think even more in the UK and in Europe, the arts are validated like a lot more than for example like where I come from yeah um definitely I had a school counselor tell one of my friends he said he wanted to do fashion um when when we had when we were in our last year and we, we were asked to talk about like what we really enjoyed and like what we wanted to do in college and um a friend of mine who was telling the counselor that he liked fashion and he goes yeah but that's a hobby like what do you want to <laughs> do yeah. And I always find that so funny because like you exactly like you just you mentioned all the facts and figures like we know that it's an industry that contributes to so much, you know, a lot of pollution, a lot of a lot of things, but yes. like especially financially yeah. and mm-hmm. more and more and more because people are becoming with social media so much more concerned with their image. And so that goes um, in line with their style. And still there's not a lot of val- va- they're not as there isn't as much validation um, like as like you being like in the medical field or right. if you're a lawyer yeah. or if you're an engineer, like especially back home, if you're not any of those three, yeah. you're not. You're, you're not, not serious. Seriously. I, exactly. But I, then, but then, sorry, sorry, just to cut you, sorry, Diana. But then what's quite interesting is that the behavior of a creative is one of a deviant. Mm-hmm. So you are deviating from the norm that that makes you it's almost like they're trying to label an individual who deviates as somebody who has the propensity to be mentally ill that's the sort of conjured image you get and and the funny thing is we talk about all those artists Van Gogh and Frida Kahlo but the one sort of visual that we have is of their mental illness along obviously with the visuals of their creative you know art pieces and their the, the, you know the, 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 their amazing skill set but this is where I kind of feel as though those bodies that are you know sort of commissioned to um, producing reports on the issue and on the industry I feel that they're being just a little bit lazy because mm-hmm. they're creating this assumption of creative individuals having more of a propensity to having mental illness and that's not that I, I don't believe that there is enough data to to support that link however what I do believe is that there that the working conditions our social environment which we'll talk a little bit more later have much more of an impact and is far more um, conducive in you know sort of establishing any link between mental ill health and the creative sectors mm-hmm. um if and so um just to if i understand you correctly are you uh are you saying that um there is this old approach of power to um call those who are different mentally ill or turn them absolutely. into absolutely idiots or like savants or like whatever they used to call them absolutely um i guess like in that case the current system is much more sophisticated at that because it's um uh I, I guess like on I guess on that but that's I guess like a wider the wider discussion of mental health in general I mean I think the I've been mentioning the same stats for like three years they've probably changed now but um when I checked three years ago the uh, uh according to the DSM the, the most recent version then of the DSM um two-thirds of the American population could be diagnosed with a mental illness with mm. which obviously makes you wonder who's then saying that that one third is the normal 
Right. Fine. And how do you classify <laughs> what's normal yeah, and, exactly. what's, and what's mentally ill? What, what sort of behavioural... We don't know that, you see. Well, I mean, like the DSM surely de- definitely claims that it knows that. But mm-hmm. I guess like it's... I guess like psychology and all of these, this, these kind of... Um, uh, don't want to bitch about psychology or neuroscience or anything, but I guess... I mean, these disciplines aren't particularly old. It's like largely 20th century, uh, the 20th century. And then if you look into where a lot of these studies come from, they come from pretty dodgy areas. The experiments were dodgy and everything. And I think that, but that's like a wider problem of of the mental health industry perhaps and then on top of that it's also incredibly euro like west western centric i guess Mm -hmm. it's there is the there is the norm and then there are those who deviate from it and that's uh and that and that norm is i guess like quite a uh i don't know it's quite a limited place to be in yeah i guess yeah yeah. non-flexible but that's good it gives us you know sort of enough ground to, to to almost um question where a lot of the research mm. and where a lot of yeah. the findings are coming from. I think I think the key to answer, you know, the question is just not to be so passive um, in just digesting facts and figures. Mm-hmm. So which creative sector do you think experiences the highest rates of mental illness and what are the contributing factors? I mean, which um, sector amongst creative sectors, I mean? Do you mm. think it's fashion, do you, music? To be honest, I think it's equally distributed. <laughs> like, I, I mean, uh, maybe I'm going to take it personal and maybe I'm going to say fashion industry, but then I will think of my friends who they want to become a singer. And then to start with the music industry, that's a whole different, that's that's just another huge problem in the world of music industry Absolutely. that is happening right now. And actually happened for a lot of decades, right? Not mm-hmm. only right now, because we've been dealing with lots of issues from a long time ago. Not, yeah, yeah. But today yeah. we are talking about them. So that's why it's important. Yeah. Suicidality is also quite um, a, a key sort of area of, of, of evaluation when we're actually asking which creative um, sector is, is more, um, I guess, prone to you know, mental ill health, because, you know, you look at the Kurt Cobains with the music, mm-hmm. you look at, you know, Freddie Mercury, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Robin Williams, uh, you know, within, mm-hmm. I mean, um, and then let's think of the women singers as well, yeah. who mm-hmm. are sexually abused right now, or right. I'm, I'm, I'm very serious about yeah. them, their managers, or let's talk about if you know, the pop singer Kesha, Kesha, Kesha. as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's, I think each and every industry is um, in the creative sector is, there are lots of hidden things. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I would agree with you though that in that they're they're almost quite evenly spread because you hear it in the you know in the fashion industry with the photographers and the models and then with the singers and their I guess their like labels and how they have to kind of conjure up this image that isn't really them like you see it with all the Disney stars too and acting as well and I guess singing um, both but I think I think it's hard to kind of pick and choose one, but I think like my sister's an actress and um, I I see uh, a lot of her friends and there's just kind of this, it's it's really interesting. There's just this kind of understanding that they just all suffer together <laughs> as like artists. <laughs> like sometimes I'll ask her something. I'm like, but why? She's like, because it's just like that. Like, it's just the artist thing. And I'm like, but why? You know, like they like all smoke and it's like an artist thing. And I'm like, that's, that's interesting. But I think it's like, I guess it's like I said before, I don't even know if there's a way to, to just like make it all the creative industries. I think every industry kind of suffers. Also, I think nowadays as an artist, you could be an artist who's interested in technology, right? Or you could be an artist who doesn't smoke. You could be aware, you could be, um, you could be interested in the environment. So I think there's lots of labels, but right now what is happening is that we are evolving and we are open minded to be everything. I believe that we could be everything that we want in the same time. I'm more like a Da Vinci a fan who he mm. was a painter, who he was a sculptor, who he was an engineer, who he was an inventor. I believe that we are capable of doing more than just suffering and painting. I, I think, agree. I think that what you that you, the fact that you brought up Da Vinci that's like another interesting point, which is that um, kind of leads to can conjures up another interesting point, which is that over the twentieth century there's been a lot of movement towards. Um, I guess, pushing every individual art form further and further into a particular specialism, effectively keeping people from Mm -hmm. cooperating. But I guess like everyone who's, anyone who's ever started doing anything creative, whether it's like designing or writing, you do find yourself being like, oh, I actually need to figure out how to, I need to put a bit of engineering in there. And I actually also need to 
and my literary knowledge isn't good enough. So I need to do that as well. And actually on, on that, I think I might perform in this costume myself. So I guess like this kind of holistic um, approach yeah. to art making is something that's been made increasingly impossible over the years. And it's also, it's got to do with funding bodies as well because and box ticking and all of this kind of stuff because they need to certain, fill a certain quota, la, 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 la. And before you know, you, you're you like the only person who's working like exclusively with like red plastic on like things to do with children or like, I don't know, like it's, you know, you yeah. end up in these like weird niches. And I think it would be great if we could be more interdisciplinary. I almost, strongly and, agree. And I cooperate. I With think that's as well. I think that specialization is limitation. Yeah. A hundred percent. And yeah. that's so well said. In conclusion, more research needs to be undertaken to fully understand and tackle the real crux of the issue. Those who work in the creative sector make an important, varied contribution to our society. These findings show we need to pay more attention to their health and well-being. If we value creative sectors and enjoy music, film and TV, art and writing and other important creative outputs, we need to act and help support those who produce it. Government, communities, educational institutions and the industry need to come together to help support and improve teaching expertise, along with skills acquisition, job creation policy development and future-led research. Please follow us at Alpha Omega London on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest, where we'll be sharing superb artworks from a hand selection of artists within our network whose pieces depict their feelings on mental health. There you can see works from the incredibly talented Bobby Ray, Brendan Totten, Roa al Mansuri, Stephanie Mikado, Patrick Gerard, and Clara Catley. Thank you for tuning in and a huge thanks to all our wonderful panelists. Please remember to rate five stars and subscribe.